Bitcoin is blowing up. Uh, today is a big day for Bitcoin, everybody. And I just thought that I would pop in here and uh, celebrate. Uh, we got to bring out the wine bottles, man, because we have been waiting for Bitcoin to do what it was supposed to do a long time ago. And uh, I'm going to talk about Bitcoin and the massive price rise of Bitcoin, uh, which has hit a new record. And uh, also, we're going to let you guys know what else is going on in the investing world. So get comfortable, buckle up your seatbelt. We're going to get started on the Black Financial Channel right now. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Black Financial Channel. That's theblackfinancialchannel.com. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. I am your friendly neighborhood finance professor. On the Black Financial Channel, we talk about black wealth and black economics every single day because we are obsessed with black wealth. And uh, the condition is that we'd like for you to be B first, uh, black first, sorry, not B first, B one. Uh, B one means black first. Black first means that we solve our own problems before we solve anybody else's problems. B one also means that we, uh, we must be one in order to be successful. B one means that our children, B1 children, by the year 2050 are going to be world leaders when it comes to wealth, accumulation, asset acquisition, everything in between, because we're going to do everything is, that's necessary now to make that happen in the future. Those who control the future are those who prepare for it today. So if you agree with the philosophy, put a hashtag B in the number one in the chat, hashtag B1. What's going on, Chris and Jamila and JD and Silverstream and Andre? So give me a yes or no. Give me a yes or no. How many of you have been following Bitcoin and what's been going on uh, with Bitcoin and the price rise? Uh, Bitcoin is, is through the roof right now. It's, it's really, really... Um, uh, doing amazing things. It just hit a new record. So that's a big deal. Uh, and I want to congratulate you, uh, you know, because a lot of you have invested in Bitcoin. A lot of you have money uh, in Bitcoin um, right now. And I'm super happy for you uh, because I told you my goal was to see you make money. I want to see you get rich. Uh, so give me a guess. How many of you, how many Bitcoin investors do we have in here? How many of you? Okay. <laughs> Lisa says I've been making bank. Good for you. I love to see a black a black person making bank and uh, a black man or black woman making bank makes my day. So, uh, how many of you are bet are invested in Bitcoin um, or or Ethereum or something like that? Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the big the big kahunas. That's the Michael Jordan and the Scottie Pippen of the crypto space. Those are two cryptos I deeply believe in, and two cryptos that I have a lot of money invested in. So uh, today's a big day. Uh, my wife is going to give me some extra kisses when I show her what's going on with our crypto account. So that's really cool. So what's the deal? What's happening right now with Bitcoin that has me so excited? Well, uh, Bitcoin has just hit a price. Right now, it is trading right at this very moment at. Uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern time, precisely on uh, October 20th, it is traded at $66,820.85. That's a big deal, man. That's a 7% increase in the last day. That's pretty massive. That's a 4% increase in the last hour. It's a 21% increase in the last week and a 39% increase in the last month and a 461.25% increase over the last year. So. When I, you know, talk to you guys a lot about buy and hold and and don't just go flipping, constantly flipping and moving your stocks too much, uh, you know, that that's what I'm talking about. Just, you know, be patient. Chill out, man. The money's coming. The money's usually coming. Believe me. Uh, you know, that's what I did when I was working on my dissertation. All I did was go through like gobs and tons and tons of financial data over the last hundred years and you see patterns you patterns emerge and one of the patterns that is abundantly clear is that if you are a patient investor and you're well diversified and you consistently pour money into your uh, portfolio and you're investing in things that make sense you're gonna be you're gonna make money you're gonna make money the biggest mistake you can make as an investor is to not invest at all so uh your cousin them who all think the stock market's the devil uh Go check their bank account. I bet you it's empty. Uh, you know, or your, or your granny who's telling you that stock market is going to collapse tomorrow and you're going to lose everything. Granny probably hasn't grown a lot of wealth. I'm not making fun of grandma because we all got that grandma in our family. But I'm just telling you guys, uh, the, there's a there's a pattern here. There's a tried and true pattern. It's been true for 120, 130 years. And I just want you to pay attention to this. All right. So um, uh, right now, the Dow is doing extremely well. The Dow's up 148%, or sorry, 149 points on 148%. That would be crazy. And uh, that's good. Uh, so so the stock market's solid. The crypto market's doing really well. Now, let me tell you guys what's going on with Bitcoin and why Bitcoin is so high. According to CNBC, I'm going to read some of this to you, and we're going to break this down. Hit the thumbs up button. Take one second, please, right now. I need you to do this right now. 
please hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, share, subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. And by the way, um, you, you guys know I'm a big believer in Dr. Claude Anderson and Powernomics. And so uh, it, it, the holidays are coming. A great gift for your family would be uh, would not be a, something stupid at Walmart. It would not be just a toy. It's not just like a pair of pants. Uh, get them some Powernomics books. Get them something that's going to change their life because the answers are out there, y'all. It's not, it's not like they're blocking black people from all access to any sort of wealth accumulation. It's a matter of what you pay attention to what you pay attention to is going to pay you back so uh powernomics.com is dr anderson's website all right and he's going to be in later on uh this week uh, i i believe and also tonight we're doing the dr boys book club where we're going to read uh dr anderson's books all right so here's what's going on with bitcoin according to cnbc bitcoin jumps to new record high after 60 above 66 000 after the landmark us etf launch so what are they referring to well, what they're referring to is that there was this Bitcoin ETF that was just released, and it was a Bitcoin futures ETF, which means that if you buy the Bitcoin futures ETF, you're not actually getting to own Bitcoin. But since when did anything logic will actually matter, you know, in a world where psychology drives everything? Um, basically, just the launch of the, of the futures ETF, just the chatter about Bitcoin is what a lot of people would argue is the reason Bitcoin hit this new record high. None of this surprises me. None of this surprises me because the more I observe the price movements of Bitcoin and other forms of heavy crypto, the more I see that it is typically a sentiment play. Uh, the more Bitcoin is the popular kid in school, the more people buy it. That's really what it comes down to. When everybody's talking about it, people go buy it and the price goes up because of that, right? Right. There's not much economic theory to back up what's exactly what's happening here. The The only economic theory that comes to mind immediately is supply and demand. Uh, if you look at most of the indicators, you'll see that a lot of people who buy Bitcoin never, ever sell it. Eight, I believe 70 to 80 percent of all Bitcoin is in accounts that are not selling anything. You can you can knock on their door. Hey, I'll give you 70,000 a coin. They're like, no, thank you. I'll give you 80,000. No, no, thank you. They, they ain't selling. Why, why are they not selling? Well, because they're holding on for the long haul. They're like, look, this thing is a baby compared to what it's going to be three, four, five years from now. And that's what a lot of rich people do. That's what, one thing you want to understand is that one thing rich people do is they buy stuff and they just sit on it, right? They just sit on wealth instead of moving and constantly shaking like, well, when should I sell? You know, a lot of people will say, well, I bought my stock. When should I sell it? What are you going to sell it for? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to buy a better stock? Are you going to buy some real estate? If you're going to sell it so you can go have a, you know, go to go to the club and, and pop bottles for everybody, well, then you're taking yourself out of the game. You're taking yourself off the freeway of wealth. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't sell sometimes. Sometimes we got to sell. Sometimes things happen. We need money, right? Maybe need a new pair of shoes. I get all that. But don't think that because you bought something that you have to sell it in your lifetime. If you want to know what the super rich are doing, a lot of them are buying stuff and just sitting on it like a goose sitting on a golden egg. And they sit on it across multiple generations. There's, you do know, there's families that have bought like Coca Cola stock in like 1950 and still haven't sold it. They're just like that. We're, I, well, why are you rich? Well, because I own $10 million in Coca Cola stock and another $5 million in Walmart stock and another $5 million in, in Google stock. It, well, when, when are you going to sell? When's a good time to sell? Well, why would I sell? I, the companies are strong. I want to be a part of that, right? So with Bitcoin, a lot of people are doing the same thing with Bitcoin. They are sitting on it and they are not selling it to anybody for any price. What does that mean? Well, that means that as more buyers come through the door, as more people start chattering, like you, seriously, give me a yes or no. How many of you became more curious about Bitcoin the more you heard people talking about it? How many of you became more curious when I said, hey, y'all, Bitcoin's going up. Oh, my God, this is happening, right? A lot of y'all tuned in. Well, because that's kind of what happens, right? So when all the new people come in, they're buyers. So the sellers are just sitting there like, oh, we've been waiting. We, we've we been expecting you for about two years now. So now that you're here, you know, push keep pushing the price up and maybe we'll sell to you. Okay. So I feel, you know, just from a sentiment standpoint and from an economic theory standpoint, so basic supply demand, if this ain't calculus, y'all, supply demand. Bitcoin is going to continue to rise. It's going to hit 100,000 at some point. My prediction at the beginning of the year was that it would hit 108,000 by the by January 1st. 
that prediction's off now because of crazy things that happened during the year that caused unnecessary volatility in Bitcoin. People were just throwing salt on Bitcoin's name. You know how it is. Right before 50 Cent blew up, he got shot nine times because it, when the more you rise, the more haters you're going to have. Bitcoin has a lot of haters. So, so there are people that shot Bitcoin nine times and Bitcoin is still surviving. But mark my word, I'm telling you, I believe Bitcoin is going to go to 100,000. It may happen next year. It may happen the year after that. But 66,000, I believe my view, my personal perspective is that in a year, 66,000 is going to seem very cheap, right? Now, don't forget, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin in order to own Bitcoin. You can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin, right? So some of you own $100 worth of Bitcoin. Some of you own $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. Some of you own $10,000 worth of Bitcoin. What's going on is that when when that what matters is the percentage increase in price. So when the price goes up by 6%, you're getting 6%. So if you had $100, you're going to have $106, right? If you had 1000, you have a $1060, right? So the percentages are kind of what scales it down and allows everybody to participate in this process. Okay, so do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, share, subscribe button. Uh also uh just a reminder, don't forget all black national convention is coming up uh uh in, in 9 or 10 days. We have uh, some of the best crypto experts on the planet coming to uh, coming to the All Black National Convention. Carla Ballard, I believe Doc Montgomery is coming. I got to double check to make sure Doc is still coming. But there's a few other people there that are experts in this area. So if you want to be around people who are B1, who are also into the things you're into, uh, feel free to join us. Go to allblacknationalconvention.com. I'll put the URL on the screen so you can see it, so you can write it down and uh, bring your family. All right, there's the URL. All right, so uh, according to CNBC, they said Bitcoin notched a fresh high, all-time high on Wednesday as investors cheered the successful launch of the first U.S. Bitcoin futures exchange traded fund, which actually went up as well. Um, the world's largest cryptocurrency rose by about 3% to 66,690 by 1058 a.m. Eastern time, topping a previous record of 64,899 set in mid-April. So it's been all the way since April. It took six months for Bitcoin to recover and get back to where it was. Um, I'd never doubted that it would eventually get back here. I thought maybe it might even get back sooner than this. Quote, the key here is whether we are able to establish support above 65,000. If we can, the classic Q4 crypto rallies we've seen in most years could take Bitcoin towards some, some of the loftier price predictions we've seen over the past several months. If sell pressure takes over, though, our next leg up could take a while to materialize, said Jesse Proudman, CEO of crypto robo advisor Makara. So what they're basically saying, which makes sense, is that now that the price has hit a new high, uh, there are some people who shave some off the top, who sell when the price hits a new high. So you could see a dip as a result of that additional selling. Um, just, But to be honest with you, I'm not selling. Uh, I it, If the dip happens, I'm going to buy the dip. Uh, I'm not going to stop buying, waiting for a dip. I just, I just buy consistently because the general trend, upward trend, the general trend of the market uh, for a lot of assets, for a lot of uh, basic spaces is is typically upward, right? So trying to time and pick the right time to buy in is hard to do. So I just buy consistently and do dollar cost averaging. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm telling you, I don't I don't believe in overthinking it. Uh, bullish, bullish comments from a legendary trader boosted sentiment Wednesday. Billionaire investor Paul Tudor Jones called crypto his preferred inflation hedge over gold. Qu quote, Bitcoin would be a great hedge. Crypto would be a great hedge, Jones told CNBC Squawk Box on Wednesday. There's a plan in place for crypto, and clearly it's winning the race against gold at the moment. I would think that would that would that would also be in very a very good inflation hedge. It would be my preferred one over gold at the moment. That's a big deal for a guy like Paul Tudor Jones, the billionaire, to say that crypto is a better hedge, inflation hedge than gold. Um, I, I think that's a little bit premature. I it's not that Bitcoin isn't a great investment. But Bitcoin still has a lot of uh, scary volatility. And so j just be prepared that, you know, everything that goes up can come down very quickly, especially when you talk about Bitcoin and crypto. So as much as I hate doing this, I want to make sure that I warn you that there could be a dark side to all that you're seeing right now. So or or maybe some dark, uh, a dark few months or a dark couple of years like we did with crypto. We we have Bitcoin shooting way up. And then it just crashed and stayed down for about three years and then started back up in 2020. Uh, let's see here. Ethereum also rose by 6% to cross back above the 4,000 level. The world's second largest cryptocurrency traded at 4,049, approaching its all-time high, intraday high of 4380 in May. The ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF, which tracks Bitcoin futures contracts, speculating on the future price of the cryptocurrency, 
rose nearly 5% on its first day of trading Tuesday. Not everyone in the crypto market was impressed. Several Bitcoin investors want an ETF that tracks spot prices rather than futures. I agree with that. Novice investors have to ha, have had to get, get to grips with terms like contango, where the futures price of a commodity is higher than a spot price and backward backwardation, which is essentially the opposite. Yeah, yeah, that's futures are a whole different <laughs> animal. Um, more products are great, but I don't see the point of investing in futures based Bitcoin ETFs when you could just buy the asset in the spot market. And I agree with this person, Jody Gunsberg. So, um, you know, really, honestly, I think that a lot of this uh, movement in Bitcoin is it's significant. I mean, it has a real impact on your bank account and I'm very happy for you, but it, it's kind of much ado about nothing. Like literally it's, it's sort of this, it's when it's, it's nothing that's made into something. There's really nothing about a, in my view, about a Bitcoin futures ETF that justifies from a fundamental standpoint, the price movement of Bitcoin. But if you understand human beings, you can see why the price will go up because now Bitcoin is being discussed. Um, th there's uh, a greater probability of, an, of institutional adoption uh, as a result of this, the creation of this ETF. It's not going to be the last ETF. And at some point there will be the, 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 the ETF you're looking for is not the futures ETF for Bitcoin. You're really looking for the, um, the ETF that tracks the spot price. That's when you can actually buy the ETF and get real ownership in Bitcoin. Right now, uh, the Bitcoin futures ETF does not allow that. Okay. So uh, that's kind of what's going on. And it's, it's really cool to watch. And uh, I'm super excited. I, I personally think that this is a, a watershed moment. Uh, it's a moment we've been waiting for, for a long time. I mean, this, crap has been uh, driving me crazy for a minute. I, I don't know about y'all, but it's it's one of those things where where you feel like um, you feel like something good's going to happen in this area. Um, my sentiment on Bitcoin has always been bullish. Uh, and I think that there's good reason for that. Uh, also, if you want to know what cryptos that I really love the most, uh, I really love Bitcoin and Ethereum. I, 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 I traded a lot of the altcoins and I hear a lot of you talk to me about Dogecoin and stuff like that. Dogecoin is very exciting, really you know. Oh, let me turn this off. Dogecoin is very exciting, but it's in in, in Shiba Inu and all that. But it's really not a, a great investment in my view. Uh, but but it's interesting, right? It's fun. It's like okay, yeah, let's buy some Dogecoin. Let's buy some Shiba Inu. But that's not really what's going to make you rich long term. That's not what's going to make your grandkids rich. Uh, what's going to make your grandkids rich, in my view, is the fact that you had a chance to be in on this crypto uh, explosion. I uh, very early in the process. So by the way, guys, I want to show you all something. Um, so this is uh, the All Black National Convention uh, that's coming up. This is the, the landing page. It's allblacknationalconvention.com. It's October 29th through November 1st. And uh, I hope you guys can see the page. And so we have a lot of really great, really intelligent black people that we're bringing together. Uh, there's uh, Nathaniel Jordan, the Minister of Wellness. Queen Afua, who is also an expert at helping you have a healthy immune system. Uh, this, to me, is superior to simply relying on pills and jabs uh, after your health is destroyed. Uh, instead, how about we just keep our people healthy from the beginning? So if you don't know about Queen Afua, you should look her up. Uh, she's amazing. Riza Islam is a brother that I support immensely because Riza is constantly being banned uh, for being outspoken. I support him as a brilliant young leader who can do great things for our people. And I want to hear what he has to say. Nuri Muhammad, if you don't know Nuri Muhammad, you should know Nuri Muhammad because Nuri is one of the great black leaders of this country. He's one of our keynotes. Uh, here's some others. There's my wife, Dr. Alicia Watkins, a licensed therapist and full professor of social work. There's Vicki Dillard. Everybody knows Queen Vicki. She's uh, from Fly Nubian Queen, uh, probably the queen of black media. I think a magazine just says she's the queen of black media. Julian Gordon, who is a real estate expert, he's the dean of real estate in the black business school. He's going to be there um, talking about some of what he's doing down in Baton Rouge, where they are buying millions of dollars in property. Uh, black people need to own real estate. And so a couple major projects that we're going to talk more about at the convention, which is in Orlando, October 29th, is uh, Julian's buying millions of dollars in property in Baton Rouge. And Jay Morrison uh, did something historic by with the Tulsa Fund. They raised $13 million 
uh, and they bought, they create, created something called the Black House, which is a big, beautiful place down in Atlanta. We actually have an office. The Black Business School has an office in the Black House. So we, we planted our flag in Atlanta. Uh, we just bought some property in Atlanta. And they're in the middle of a massive, 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 massive real estate deal that involves hundreds and hundreds of acres of land that will be owned by Black people. So we're, we're bringing together people that are getting it done. Uh, people like Tina Berry from Fly New Being Queen. She's awesome. Lene Javette is a business startup specialist. She can talk to you about business and getting that stuff moving. King Randall is a 21-year-old kid who started a school with literally a few thousand bucks. You know, everybody thinks it takes years to start a school and a million dollars. No, this brother did it at 21 years old with almost nothing. Uh, Maj Ture knows how to shoot guns. And I believe that black people, black survivalism is becoming an important issue with, uh, with people getting fired for not getting the jab, stuff like that. You're going to have to learn to live off the grid a little bit. Maybe, maybe that's going to come up. So Maj is, uh, is from black guns matter. And I said, Hey, I, I think people need to learn a little bit more about weapons. Black people don't need to walk around without weapons in a world where everybody has one. Uh, Constance Carter owns the black, largest black real estate firm in California. So she's a brilliant, woman that can talk to you all day about real estate. Akila Nihonda is the next great superstar rapper. She's got millions of views and she she's B1. She represents our community to the fullest. She's like she's like the new Lauren Hill, uh, if you ask me. Um, Jeff Lighty Jr. is like, a, it's kind of like a Stephen A. Smith kind of guy. He's on Ball Sports. You've seen him on this channel. He's, he's a young brother that's doing great things and I love the young people that are killing it. Mary Dean Esquire is the Wall Street lawyer. So she's a brilliant attorney. And, and let me just tell y'all, look, I've only gone through like a small fraction of the people that are going to be at the convention. I could keep going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And so literally uh, the reason that I hope you'll join us at the All Black National Convention is because uh, we have a black brain trust. We have a brain trust of people who are wired specifically. These are our super soldiers, our intellectual super soldiers who are wired specifically to solve problems for black people. They're not here to go and do the bidding for white folks. They're not here to go and save everybody but us. They're not here to go and 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 get a bunch of butter biscuits and, and disappear from the community. These are people that are really out here doing the work. And these are my heroes. These are the people that I want uh, to see, you know, in our community kind of doing the damn thing. And so um, just to give you another quick visual here, uh, there's Dr. Claude Anderson. You guys know he's always going to be a part of anything I do because he's literally the Marcus Garvey of our day. And uh, Vicky and, and, and Nuri and Jay and Riza and D1, you guys know the rapper D1 and Akila Nihunda and Jade Arendell from Fly Nubian Queen, an extraordinary activist. Dr. Wesley Muhammad can't make it this year, uh, but he was going to come in, but he, something came up. So this brother can't make it, but I'm going to bring him on the platform. We've got young leaders like Gabby Goodwin and, and Aaliyah Clyburn. The, uh, we have lots of young people now from the Black Business School who are making more money than adults. Like you, there's no college that does this. There's no university. Harvard University can't do this for black people. You know, uh, you know, Yale University does not do this for black people. Uh, these schools are not designed to train black people to build the black community. There's Madam President, one of the great poets and the greatest poets in this country. Uh, another great poet, um, Ernestine Morrison, who uh, had the most viral uh, poem in, in, in the history of the Internet. She was on the Arsenio Hall show and got millions of views on her or her performance. Here's um, uh, Dr. Charm. If you've ever heard Dr. Charm, you'll know she's amazing. I mean, Dr. Charm is awesome. Farmer Brown, the MC, is going to be teaching black folks how to grow their own food. So this is just like a kind of a final visual. Like I, I didn't even name like a fraction of all the people that we have coming in. But literally, uh, for example, Chris Davis. Chris Davis is the world's leading automation business automation expert. The biggest companies in the world call Chris Davis because they want to learn how to automate their businesses and make money. Chris Davis is going to be there. The brothers from Hip Hop Uncensored, that's the new breakfast club. They have a million subscribers almost on their platforms now. They built this as independent black. They're 100% B1. Uh, you, you, Attorney Nicole Compton, one of the great business startup specialists in this country. She's been a lawyer for over 20 years. Uh, you got, um, it's just, I mean, I can keep going. I And, and I'll, forgive me for rambling and going on and on and on. But literally, we have put together what I believe is one of the greatest uh, black events in the history of this world. Uh, these are some of the baddest black people that you'll ever see, young and old. Uh, in my remember Dr. Uh, Christina, Dr. Christina Parks. Uh, she's down here. Dr. Christina Parks gave that great testimony uh, in front of the Michigan House of Representatives. They got millions of views. She's coming, right? She's a cell biology uh, PhD out of the University of Michigan. So long story short, uh, this is what uh, this is what we're getting. Uh, this is this is what's happening at the convention. And I hope you guys will join us. 
Uh, and, uh, and, and I, and forgive me for going on and on about it, but I wanted to make sure you all were hundred percent fully aware of how much, uh, how much effort we put into this and how proud we are because we did this by ourselves and, and it's not easy being black It ain't easy being black first. Everybody's scared of you. Uh, you can't get a bank loan corporations, you know, I, not that we would take their money. We don't take their money, but they wouldn't want to offer it. Right. So a lot of, um, the benefits, like you'll see people doing stuff that's supposedly black, but you look in the background and they've got a big white corporation backing them up, or they'll have, you know, some major network backing them up, or they'll be getting money from the Democratic Party, like the Congressional um, Black Caucus Convention. No disrespect to that, but but literally all these things are funded by a puppet master. Uh, we have no puppet master. There are no strings to hold us down. Like we literally are doing this ourselves. And uh, so just take a look at the URL, allblacknationalconvention.com. Uh, what we're asking you to do is share the URL with others if you can. Uh, if you want to come out, bring your family, bring groups. Uh, it's going to be in Orlando, October 29th through November 1st. We're doing everything, uh, all kinds of really fun stuff. We're doing speed dating uh, because a lot of y'all are having trouble finding good people to date. So we, we're doing speed dating. And for those of you that aren't looking for anybody to date, we're doing speed networking. So if you're not looking for a hookup, that's fine. Why do we do this? Well, because who you date and who you marry is huge when it comes to uh, what happens in, in your family and in your community. A lot of the problems that black people have come from unhealthy relationships. You laying down with that toxic Negro who is messing up your life and getting you pregnant and running off and not even taking care of his own kids. He only left you. He didn't leave you with any support. He just left you with an STD. Well, that kind of thing is real. That's the kind of thing that our people are dealing with. And the more conscious you become as a black person, the more disconnected you become from a lot of the what's happening in the community. You have a lot of ratchetness out here that's being supported as so-called black culture. And uh, and so that's why we're doing speed dating, because we have relationship experts who said we need to do something to help B1 people find other B1 people. So we are going to do speed dating. We're doing speed networking. We're going to do the B1 ball and award show. Um, at the awards show, we're gonna when we get the Black Excellence Awards, we're gonna have speaker, uh, it's, uh, singers and performers like like Victory Boyd. Let me let me let me try to see if I can kill my own image. Hold on, all right. Anyway, there we go. Let me let me shut this down. There we go. So you can see. I don't know if you can. Let me know if you can still hear me. Give me a yes if you guys can still hear me. Um, give me a yes in the chat to let me know you can still hear me because I I shut down my my video. I want to make sure you, that I'm still coming through. Okay, but yeah. So Victory Boyd is um. A bad sister. If you look her up, she's the best singer that you've ever heard in your life. Uh, again, Jay Z signed her like on the spot when he first heard her sing. That's why he signed her to Rock Nation. She's coming in. She's bringing her whole family. Her father, John Boyd, just wrote a book, uh, and he is also going to give a lecture on how he was able to create his family business by getting all of his children on the same page. One thing that people don't understand. I know we started talking about Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is important. Bitcoin is important for Black wealth. But now I'm gonna talk about. Uh, I'm now I'm gonna give you the boys coin. I gave you the Bitcoin. Now let me give you the boys coin in terms of explaining to you uh, where your trillions of dollars are going. Why black wealth is disappearing? Well, a lot of it's disappearing because you've got family that could be tremendous assets in your life, but they their brains have been poisoned. The culture has been poisoned. The trust has been poisoned, and the ability to trust each other and work together allows you. That makes the difference between freedom and slavery. If you have five people in the family and all of them are working for a separate white man, then that's wasted energy. That's making white people rich. But when you can get all your family members on the same page and all of them working together, you can create a massive empire. So this family working together, Victory Boyd isn't the only one. She has, I think, eight siblings or something. All of them sing together. All of them are coming to the convention. Her daddy's coming to give a lecture on how he got his family working together to create a family business. And they're rocking it. She signed with Rock Nation. She was supposed to sing the national anthem at the opener for at the NFL opener of this year. And she uh, chose not to do it because they, to they told her to go get the jab. And she said, for, for religious reasons, we're not going to do it. And they said, well, if you don't do it, we're going to take away all your money and all your butter biscuits. She said, I don't care. You can take that money. You can shove it up your butt. Seriously, she walked away from a lot of money because of her principles. Those are the people that we need to celebrate. Those are our heroes in the community. Those are the people. These are the Negroes you're not going to see on TV. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you follow what I'm saying? Do you understand why I'm, I'm being emphatic about helping you understand that you need to celebrate the people in your community that stand on their principles? Stop celebrating the people who are being rewarded because of how they sold out. 
That's what you, you the guy on TV is there in many cases because he did what Hollywood wanted him to do. He's pushing the agenda Hollywood wants him to push. They won't put guys like this on TV. Al Duncan and Freddie Taylor, two black men who are they they ain't thugs. They're they they're, they're not they don't run around saying horrible things about black women. They love their wives. They're not relentless baby daddies. They have children that they've raised in their household. These guys are not running around here, you know, seeking jobs and, and, and begging. These guys are both millionaires, but you've never, you'll never see them on TV because they don't put strong, masculine, straight black men like this on TV. These are strong, solid brothers that I've worked with for years that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. They're going to be speaking at the convention. They're going to be giving you the blueprint of how to be successful without having to sell out, without having to compromise your values while still knowing who the hell you are. They've created millions of dollars doing this. So that's it. That That's that's my, my two cents on the convention. Um, I hope you'll take a look. Uh, the URL is allblacknationalconvention.com. I'll put it on the screen. I took myself off the screen because I don't want to be a distraction on this. I really want you to see all the great black people in your community. I don't want you just seeing me. I Sure, a lot of you see me, and I, I'm so honored that you have respect for what I do. Uh, but I want you to see these people, too. And there's like there's 60 of them that we're bringing in this year. I didn't even talk about Dr. Ken Burns, who's the head of the Black Business League, created by Booker T. Washington, that manages, that literally is connected to thousands of Black-owned businesses that are building uh, delegations to go to Africa and do business in major countries in Africa. I didn't even talk about Dr. Burns. I can name about another 20, 30 people that are coming who are superstars in their own right. So that's my two cents. Uh, this is your Black Brain Trust. This is your think tank. These are your people that are that are dedicated to you. Uh, your solutions are not on TV. Uh, that's controlled by white folks. Your solutions are not at that big white university. They're not there to solve problems for the Black community. They're there to solve problems for their own people. They're there to create more employees for white-owned companies. Uh, we need spaces where Black people can honestly seek out the solutions that are going to help us succeed as a people. So uh, give me a yes or no if if, if everything I said makes sense. Um, I will uh, do a Q&A or something if you have more questions and you want to know more. You can go to allblacknationalconvention.com uh, to get to get a pass to come to the convention in Orlando. We hope you'll come to the convention. That way you can do the in-person stuff like the speed dating, speed networking. We're doing um, the award show, the B1 Ball, which is going to be all fancy. It's going to be super fancy. Uh, we're going to have a spades tournament after that so we can have some fun. Uh, but then in between, there's going to be a ton of training on everything from politics to crypto to relationships to stock markets to getting off the corporate plantation, all of that. So uh, that's what's going to happen at on site. If you can't make it, there is a virtual ticket. So you can come virtually and we'll get you involved in as many sessions as we can. So uh, feel free to uh, take a look, allblacknationalconvention.com. So let's see, Future Star says, please expand on why do these universities only want to make new employees? Well, um, when you talk about college campuses, my wife and I are both uh, college professors. You, you all know this. And one of the things that we, one of the critiques we have in terms of explaining why black people um, are not able to advance economically is because uh, the, the pay attention. Now, let me lay, let me lay it out here for you so you can understand this. We have more educated black people than we've ever had. Like how many of y'all went to college? How many of y'all graduated from college and got a degree? Give me a yes. Or no. How many of y'all, um, you know, went to college and, and did what you were supposed to do? Uh, you wasn't out thugging, you wasn't out, you know, partying and drinking all the time. You actually went to class and you graduated. Give me a yes or no. How many how many college graduates you got in the room? OK. All right. So so here's the problem. Um, despite the fact that we have more black college graduates than we've ever had. Right. We have more uh, fancy educated Negroes than, than than we've ever had in all of history. I want to ask you all a basic question. How in the world is it that we've had more black college graduates than ever, more so-called upwardly mobile black people than we've ever had, but yet black wealth, if you look at the studies on black wealth, you will find consistently, you will find very consistently that black wealth has not gone up at all. How does that happen? How does that happen? I mean, you go to school and they tell you that, Oh, things used to be really bad. Now things are much better. 
And then just ask them, like, how? Exactly how are they better? Show, explain to me exactly how they're better. Well, you know, people don't people treat each other nicer, right? That, that, that's a game. They they fooled you into thinking that racism is a, it's, it's about whether or not white people like you. That's why you spend all your time getting triggered. Oh, he he called me the N-word, or that white that lady down the street don't like black people. Well, shit. I mean, I probably don't like her either. So so people don't like each other. Get over it. Stop it. Get out your damn feelings, especially you men. My God, you sound like the biggest pack of wusses I've ever heard in my life. Like, they don't like black people. You really need somebody to like you in order for you to be successful. Well, you ain't never going to be successful because the more success you have, the more haters you're going to get. Take it from a guy who has a million haters. I literally could probably point to a million people or, or videos that received million, hundreds of thousands of views about where people have literally sat online talking about how much they hate boys walking. Do you think I give a shit? Do you think I care? I do not care because I know that comes with the territory. See, that's one thing I think that you don't get is that they ain't never going to like you. And the more successful you are, the less they're going to like you. Truly successful, authentic black people in the community are the ones that they reject the most. But but you've been falsely led to believe that the ones that they put on TV are the ones who are the most successful. The ones that they like are the ones who are representing your interests, and that's just not true. The people that really stand up for black folks, like if Malcolm X was alive right now, do you really think white people would be eager, eager to give Malcolm X a, a show on, you know, CNN? If, if you know, when Louis Farrakhan went on Donahue and broke it down like nobody's business, I mean, tore those white folks to shreds on national television back in the 1980s. Do you think they were eager to bring him back? Like, yeah, let's bring him back. Oh, he's so great. He's so amazing. No, no. So, so the more authentic you are, the less they like you. So I don't want to be liked. I don't want to be liked by uh, racist people. Um, I don't want to be liked by weak, flimsy Negroes. Weak, flimsy Negroes can hate me all day long because that's exactly what's supposed to happen. The more you like me, that means if you like me and you're weak and flimsy, that might mean you like me because I'm being weak and flimsy. I don't want to fit into that. That's a losing culture. So, so here's the deal. Pay attention now. We have more educated black people than we've ever had. Negroes is going to school like crazy, especially black women. Black women are the most educated group of people on the planet. So if you have all these millions of people that are getting all these advanced degrees, why is your wealth going down and not up? Explain that. Because you, you, you think you're making progress because they're basically telling you they're giving you symbolic measures of progress. Well, my thing is, if your wealth is going down and you need wealth to provide for your family, then maybe you're not winning. I mean, because I could go to other categories. You can look at education or just generally speaking, like what's happening to black kids in, in public schools. Their education is declining. We have more black kids to graduate who can't read than ever. Uh, family structure. A lot of y'all out here looking for a spouse and can't find one because black families have fallen apart. Even even when you get your mind right and you're ready to get together with a partner and do the right thing and put it all together, you're meeting a bunch of damn duds. I talk to my friends about what they're meeting, um, what they're seeing in the dating market, and it's like full of scumbags. It's full of just put crazy, triggered, weak, irresponsible people. So 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 my point is to say that that you have received a lot of something, but you're receiving the wrong things. It's like the difference between eating healthy food versus unhealthy food. A person who sits down and says, yeah, I ate dinner. And you say, what did you eat? Well, I ate a big bag of Twizzlers and a bowl of ice cream for dinner. It's, and I'm full. And that's just as good as eating health food. That person is misguided. They think that because their stomach is full, that they ate a healthy meal. So with education, you think that just because your brain is full of information, that you received a healthy education where many of our people received a big fat bowl of toxic white supremacist education that has no benefit to the black community whatsoever. So it's not just about going to school and getting the degrees and all that. It's about receiving the right kind of education that is targeted at the right in the right space, right? If you if your if your momentum is not properly targeted, then it won't matter. If, if I, I could be, if I'm a football player and I make myself big and strong and I can run the 40-yard dash really fast in 4.2 seconds, and, I, and so I'm the biggest, strongest, fastest player uh, on the field, and they give me the ball and I run into the wrong end zone, 
then I have accomplished nothing for my team. So what you have right now is you have a lot of highly educated people that have all this mass, all this intellect, all this PhD, JD, MD, MBA, CA, PA, all these letters behind their name that make them feel like they're better than other people. But these people, unfortunately, some of them are running into the wrong end zone. They're putting the ball in the wrong basket and thinking that they're scoring points for black people. And you see it every day. Just, just watch like the BET Awards. Black excellence, y'all. Black excellence, y'all. This ain't no black excellence. Sorry, Cardi B. That's not that's not black excellence. I don't want my daughter to become a stripper. No disrespect to strippers. Shout out to the strippers in the room. I, we we love you too. You can be conscious, but I'm not, I don't want my daughter to be a, a stripper. I'm, I'm sorry. Right. I, I'd rather have her consider other professional options first. Right. Then, then if she wants to get on the pole, then that's her choice. Right. But I'm not going to introduce her to the pole before I introduce her to all the other things she could be doing with her life, because that's even Cardi will tell you that that's not a healthy life. So ultimately, um, part of what uh, I believe the Bla all black national convention accomplishes is it accomplishes a space where we create an authentic HBCU experience. And what do I mean by that? I mean, something that is black, unapologetically black and completely untethered to anything that is harmful to the black community, right? It doesn't mean that you're going to agree with everything everybody says. I'm not saying that. Like, for example, the, the, the jab issue is a very complex issue. There are some people who think that it's fine. There will be jabbed people at the event, and there will be unjabbed people at the event. And I'm not going to get into the whole, like, jab, no jab debate. I'm not going to take sides on that. I'm going to let you make your own decision. That's my That's my official opinion on that. Make your own choice, right? But but it, but the thing about it is, we need to have conversations in spaces where there's no interruption, where we're hearing from the right people, right? Black leaders, uh, black leadership has has always done it wrong. We've always done it wrong. We get caught up in, I guess maybe because of the tradition of the church, we get caught up in that one charismatic dude who becomes like. The, the, the main black leader, like, like I am, I am King Kong consciousness. I am the man who you, everybody should listen to because I am special and I am extra. Shut up. Sit down. Stop it. We have experts in every area of life who should be listened to just as much. If I need advice on sociological theories and policies that are going to benefit black people, I want to talk to a sociologist. Don't give me my, don't give me a preacher. If I need advice on uh, how to acquire real estate, I want to hear from a real estate expert. I want to hear from a, a, a Julian Gordon or a Jay Morrison or a Constance Carter or somebody who does real estate for a living. I don't want to hear from you know from from one dude who thinks he, he could be a, the jack of all trades. We need leadership by committee. We need institutions, institutions. What they killed, what they took away from you during integration was they took away your institutions and that's what killed your community. Before the 1960s, you had institutions. You had um, starting with the churches, the good churches, right? That was an institution. My grandma said she got every single thing she needed from the church, her activities. She got her education. She, she would go to, of course, go to Bible study. But then on top of that, whatever, the, the, the social support, all that came, will, will come from the church. Um, you had your own schools. That's another institution. You lost that because you wanted to go to school with white people because somehow you think that being close to a white man means that you're going to absorb more information. Uh, I'm sure studies will show that being closer to white people does not make you any smarter, but somehow they convince you that that's the case. Um, what other institution did you, you lost your families? Families, the first institution that you have. A man or woman with no family at all is literally out here in in the middle of gang warfare and they don't even have a gang right like imagine living in a neighborhood where the crips are co controlling that corner and the bloods on that corner the gd's over there ms 13s over here and you ain't got a gang at all and you got to walk to school and walk through four different neighborhoods to get to school you're gonna get shot somebody's gonna kick your ass right so so your family is your your primary institution we need families we need a conversation on what family looks like because a lot of these poor kids don't even know what a damn family looks like they think that the opposite sex is only good for sex 
They literally are engaging in some of the most destructive and dangerous behaviors imaginable, and it's going to have long-term implications on their lives. There are some things you can do at the age of 20, 21 years old that you can't fix later on, that you can't get back, right? Uh, th- what's another institution you lost? Black-owned businesses. You had businesses. You had tons of businesses. Some of these businesses, if they had survived, would have grown into multi-billion dollar corporations employing tens of thousands of people. Those businesses got shot down because they wanted you to integrate so that they could take all your goddamn money. That's what they did. They said black people are special. They saw a specialness in you that you don't even see in yourself. They said these people are special. They are talented. They work hard. They are good human beings. They forgive damn near everything. So we want these people to be under our wing so that we can extract wealth from them the same way we extract from the rest of the world. The same way they go to countries all around the globe drilling for oil and and lithium and, and rubber and whatever the case may be, starting artificial wars so they can go get the resources. They did the same thing to you. Um right here in America. So I'm I'm not interested in any of that anymore. Um, I'm just not a guy who's going to, I'm not falling for the banana in the tailpipe. Um, I'm not trying to do things the way everybody else has done it. Um, I'm okay with pissing off as many people as possible. If that is what is required, I am completely 100% confident in all the ideas I've laid out here to you today. Um, and if people don't understand, then they just don't understand. They can go do something else. But the truth of the matter is that you have some really super smart people in your community who are just simply ahead of their time. That's why their ideas don't make sense. That's why they seem uh, they, they become unpopular because they're not hopping out here trying to figure out how to twerk and, and do all this other stupid stuff that you see online. They're trying to actually solve problems. So at the convention, allblacknationalconvention.com. That's the URL on the screen. For those watching on Instagram, the link is in the bio. Feel free to take a look. Uh, the, that's what the convention's all about. That's why we created this. Uh, where did the idea from the convention come from? And I'm not making this up. I swear on this on the stack of Bibles. My grandmother's right here on the wall. Her name is Felicia. We named our Black Panther after my grandmother, Felicia. I put it on, I put it on the life of my late grandmother. The idea from the convention came to me in 2016, and it literally came to me in a dream. I swear to God, I woke up and then I called Lene Javet, who I've worked with for years. She's going to be at the convention. And I said, we need to do a convention and we're going to call it the All Black National Convention. I have no idea where it came from. But when a lightning bolt like that hits me and it hits me in my sleep, I feel like that's the universe telling me, boy, she need to go do this. Now, here's the problem. We had no money. We had I had never had a convention before. I didn't know what to do. We had no no sponsors, no nothing. And we went and we went, we rented out the shrine of the black Madonna. We had like literally three weeks or two weeks or something crazy. Like, don't even ask me what, who would be dumb enough to try to plan a convention in, in two or three weeks. But we did. We, we, we uh, called the shrine of the black Madonna. We rented the space in Atlanta. Uh, we hit up some people uh, who, who were, who were helpful enough to come in. I remember uh, killer Mike and David banner, uh, two friends of mine uh, came in and a bunch of other people did. And we rocked the place out. It was, it was totally full and it was very successful. And so uh, basically that's where it started in 2016. This is the 6-1. Uh, this is going to be in Orlando, October 29th through November 1st. Uh, the URL is allblacknationalconvention.com. Even if you don't want to come, I just ask you to do one thing. If you do one thing for me, just go to the page and take a look. Just take a look. If you see something you like, I hope you'll consider joining us. Um, if you don't want to join us, then you, you can, if you can't join us physically, you can join us virtually. And then also if you could share this link to your friends, uh, because we are hundred percent serious about what we're doing. And I'd like to believe that the fact that I've done over 18,000 videos, like we counted it up last week, I've done over 18,000 videos that have received about a, almost a quarter of a billion views over the last 10 years. I hope that that proves to you that I'm serious about this. You can't fake that. You can't fake 18,000 videos. You can't fake this. OK, so we're getting it done. We we have the solution. The main thing that we can use is just more support, more faith, more people that believe in the mission. Right. So uh, feel free to take a look and uh, and you can participate in whatever capacity that you feel comfortable. But that's my that's that's my whole discussion about the convention. I didn't even plan on talking. I plan. I came here to talk, plan to talk to you guys about Bitcoin today and how well Bitcoin's doing. But I wanted to make sure you understood completely 
how hard this was, how hard this is. You know, I mean, just and and I'm telling you, I you know, and it's 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 so hilarious because you know, I guess because we I guess a compliment, a, a backhanded compliment we get for what we're doing is. Uh, because we're doing it so well at such a high level, people assume there's no way a black person could do that on their own. They can't do that without support. So there's all, so, so on the internet, there's all these theories like, well, Boyce is really being supported by the Jews, and there's an Asian guy that's controlling all this. And I'm like, what are you talking? About? I, I hired an Asian guy like years ago, but but ain't nobody controlling this. Nobody. I did not get on the phone this morning with anybody and say, do I have permission to talk to black people, boss? Can I do? That's not something that we've ever did. Like this is a hundred percent black owned and and done by black people. And I put the brain trust. I put it, it, when you measure it based on who has the best impact on the black community, who can get the best results for black people. I put the black brain trust of the all black national convention up against the faculty of any university on this earth. I put them up against any HBCU on this earth. Howard University, brilliant people, cool, they're great, but you know what? They create a lot of employees. We, we we talk to people about owning assets and building wealth and controlling things. We're not telling them how to go and, and find jobs working for white people. They can do that. Some of them do that. There's no shame in that, but that's not what we focus on, right? So, so I put us up against any faculty on the planet because there is no um, university out here that is solely focused and specifically focused on the one objective of building wealth for black people there's and, and building power for, for the black community. There's nobody out there. You can go to Harvard and you can go to Yale, but Harvard and Yale are not sitting around saying, hmm, how do we really solve problems for the black community? They don't give a shit. And they shouldn't give a shit because you should give a shit. It's not that man's job down the street to take care of your family. It's your job. And all I'm saying to you is I'm not telling you to go ask them to come and do our job. I'm saying you do your job. Stop serving other people before you serve yourself. Take care of your own first period. That's that's what this is all about. That's what we believe. There we go. I got to go. Um, the URL is allblacknationalconvention.com. I hope you guys will join us. Um, that's as much as I can say right now. If you want to know more, I can tell you more later. Um, it starts October 29th through November 1st. Uh, we will be in Orlando. I will arrive on Wednesday. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave on Tuesday. Um, I'm bringing my kids and my mother and everyone else, and you will have a chance to meet me in person if you come to the convention. I would love to meet you, and uh, and we will win this. Like, 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 there's no like I'm telling you without any doubt whatsoever that if they if the, if if God gives me another say 25 30 years on this earth as a as a relatively healthy sane human being, um, we won't lose. We will not lose. Black people will not lose. Our children will dominate. Our children won't be in the victim box on any level. Our children will dominate the children of other communities. And that's the, the that's the energy that we have. We're not we're not chasing equality. We're not chasing integration. Uh, we, we, we don't need segregation or integration. We just want desegregation. Right. Do whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, um, this is not a like a woe is me kind of conversation. This is not a, uh, I hope white people eventually treat us better kind of thing. No, this is, this is, we need to treat ourselves better. And if we treat ourselves better, then we're going to win because you can't stop black people when we have our minds together. When we, when we have our shit together, we are literally unstoppable. You're the only ones who can say, I have ancestors who survived the horrific experience of the slave dungeons. They survived the Middle Passage, where half of, half of the people died on the on the trip over, they survived 250 years of the most brutal slavery in the history of mankind. They survived 50 years of mass in, the mass incarceration and crack epidemic. A lot of y'all grew up in crack infested neighborhoods. That's that's traumatizing, right? And then we're also surviving whatever they're doing to us right now. Okay, so so we will win. We will not lose. We will not lose. So I got to go, guys. Um, hit the thumbs up button before you go. Um, AllBlackNationalConvention.com is the URL. I got to go and uh, actually have a meeting with the team because we are planning for the convention today. So I will see you guys soon. Take care. God bless you. Love you. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. And I hope you keep making money with Bitcoin. Congratulations if you have. Talk to you later. Peace.